Hallelujah. Amen. Bless you. Praise the Lord. You gonna sing, brother? <laughs> Can I get what? This one? Well, I've been on the mountain with Jesus. Hallelujah. And I've been in the valley so long. <laughs> You've been faithful over a few things. I'll make uh, you a little bit. Uh, 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 of course, most of you know already that I recently lost my right arm. Amen. Sister White was just everything to me. Amen. She, she was uh, she just right there with me. And 38 years, a little over, we enjoyed one another enjoyed working for the Lord and with the Lord. Amen. Amen. That's what's wrong today that a lot of folks trying to work for Him but not too many working with Him. With yeah. Amen. That's the truth. Yeah. But uh, I'm glad that He's with me. Amen. <coughs> Amen. It's a privilege to be here tonight. I count Brother Davis as one of my friends and I had 
seen people sitting here that I recognize from being a little fella. Amen. Well, I'm back to a little fella again. Amen. Uh, Elmer Moon's wife, Jenny, asked me, said, what happened to you? I said, what do you mean? Amen. She said, well, you used to be. That's the man you used to be. Amen. I said, yeah, I got up to almost 300 pounds, 298, I believe it was. And uh, got sick and lost down to about 140. But uh, the Lord's been good to me. I've been through the fire and the flood and the blood. Hallelujah. <laughs> I was at a fellowship meeting the other night. Brother Brown from uh, Greenfield. Said, but why we go back a long way? I said, oh, we yeah. sure do. Yeah. We see the good, the bad, and the ugly. <laughs> Amen. But thank God there's still some folks going on. Hallelujah. Thank God for my nieces singing tonight. I have heard yes. and heard and heard. And, and uh, everybody's told me what a good job they do. And that's because they're my nieces. <laughs> if you don't believe that, ask Carol. Amen. <laughs> She'll tell you real quick. Amen. <laughs> But uh, I'm glad that Carol's here. And my God, there's just so many. If I go to Naaman, I'm going to forget somebody. But I'm glad for each and every one of you here. I'm convinced everybody's here tonight to see me. Amen. His kid didn't have a thing to do with it. Brother and Sister Davis didn't have a thing to do with it. It's all just for me. So, so don't, don't spoil the night by telling me. Go ahead, please. Amen. I was talking to Brother Magruder at the uh, funeral. He preached my wife's funeral, Brother Carol Magruder did. He was the one that had married us 38 years ago in the Windfall Pentecostal Church. And uh, he said, a little lady in his church, everybody's rapping, you know, about this gas business. That's all you hear anymore, price of gas. And now it's went down about 15 cents, and we're just excited. We forgot when it was 39 cents a gallon. Oh, I remember you know, when it was 18. Think they don't work us. I remember when it started out, you know, just creeping up, yeah. and I don't know, it must have got around 70 some cents, and, and people said, We ain't going to pay that. Yeah. Now we pull in and say, Let's get some of this cheap gas, $4 a gallon. Amen. <laughs> but it said a little lady that had been in his church a long time, and I thought she put it so well and it ought to really almost convict us Pentecostal people for griping. But she said, she got up the other night testifying at the Wednesday night service and said, I remember when gas was 10 cents a gallon and I didn't have a dime to buy a gallon with. And the day I pulled in and it was $4 a gallon and I had $20 to buy gas with. I said, that's it. God has still took care of us. Yeah. And we ought to stop a minute and Amen. just thank the Lord Amen. for what He has done. Right. We've complained about the price, but we forgot that God has blessed us to have the price right. to pay. Right. Amen. Right. I'm glad we got the price. I don't Amen. care if it goes to $20 a gallon as long as the Lord supplies the money. Amen. And He, he will. will. Amen. If you'll just let Him. He He's a miracle worker. He hasn't changed a bit. Right. He's still the same God. Yeah. He, his name is still Jesus. It hasn't changed. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank God. Well, be nice now, Brother White. Hallelujah. Thank God. Remember where you're at and all that. You know. Thank God. Preach the gospel, Preach brother. the word, brother. Go ahead. I will. Yeah. Hallelujah. You know. I, will. I will. Praise God. God is so good to us. So yeah, it really is. Preach on. Uh, it's good to see the Nazarene pastor here, my sister and really this is the truth she's talked about you yeah oh, but it right. was all good, <laughs> good. It was all good. <laughs> i ask people you know people tell me that all the time brother what brother what uh, i believe i've heard of you i said well was it good they said oh yes you know oh, they always course, put that. Yeah, they like i them. said well you talk to the wrong people you ought to talk to some of my enemies they'll tell you the truth about it <laughs> hallelujah <laughs> But if you have your Bibles and would stand and read with us in honor to the reading of the Word of the Lord tonight, a very, 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 very simple little thought, nothing profound, there's nothing new under the sun. Solomon said, 
Have you ever stopped to think, let me get something started here tonight, hallelujah. Wisest man there ever was, and all he knew to call a woman was a thing. He said, when a man finds a wife, he finds a good thing. Amen. But anyway, in the 10th chapter, lies, we'll I told you we were going to get something started. 10th chapter, 4th, 6th verse. What? But I kind of like you women. My mama was one. Amen. Amen. The 10th chapter of the book of St. Mark. All right. Read with this very familiar story. Just something to encourage us. We're living in Paris, time, folks. Whether you realize it or not, our journey is just about over. And I know we've heard that. I've heard that preached ever since I was a kid, I guess. Probably I don't particularly remember them preaching the coming of the Lord, but I know they used to scare the devil out of you in the Nazarene church. I know that much. Amen. My God, David, that's Brother Pat said, I preached hell so hot you could feel it burning you in the sea. That's Amen. where I got it from, that old Nazarene. I'm going to tell you something else. Their holiness wasn't shy either. Hallelujah. Amen. Them folks preached it. Amen. They shouted. Amen. Amen. That's all right. But in the 46th verse, and they came to Jericho. As he went out of Jericho with his disciples and a great number of people, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the highway side begging. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Many charged him that he should hold his peace, but he cried the more a great deal, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And they called the blind man, saying unto him, Be of good comfort, rise, he calleth thee. And he casting away his garment, rose and came to Jesus. Jesus answered and said unto him, What wilt thou that I should do unto thee? The blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Go thy way. Thy faith hath made thee whole. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus in the way. Pastor, would you pray over the word? Father, we thank you for the word of God tonight. And Lord, that you'll open our hearts and minds oh, to thy truth, O oh God. Reveal thyself unto us, even in this word thank tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Let it touch lives and, and, and turn men's lives around, O oh God. It's an author preacher. Help us to receive it, O oh God, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You may be seated. Bless your heart. I looked out the window and saw Brother Mark pull in and I tried to hurry up a little bit and I didn't glue my teeth in so if it didn't bother me and I lay him on the Bible stand don't get excited we won't. I used to embarrass his right to death when I done that but hey man they get to bother me well I'm going to preach anyway Amen. I don't know how that Bartimaeus had heard about Jesus but some way or another, he had heard that there was a man named Jesus. He was not concerned that he could raise the dead. He was not concerned that many miracles had been wrought except the fact that he had heard he was a blind eye open. His need was what was important. Yes. There's not a one of us here tonight that we don't have a need of some kind. That's right. Amen. And yours just isn't, couldn't be as important as mine. <laughs> but I found out that He is the answer to Hallelujah. everything. Amen. Amen. But the Bible said that as they came out of Jericho, blind Bartimaeus was sat by the highway side begging. <laughs> and I, I'm just, just let me kind of paint a picture that I see. I, I believe that he had heard and was sitting there on purpose. I believe he knew that Jesus was in the city and he sat in the way to where when he came by that he would see him. Hallelujah. In hope that the need would be met. So many times we come to the house of God just out of habit. Come for many different reasons because the pastor expects us to, because the Bible teaches us to forsake not the assembling of ourselves together, whatever reason. But every time we come to the house of God, we ought to come 
to get our needs met. Amen. Amen. We're living in an hour of needs, folks. Everybody is needed. Uh, you all have just went through a, a terrible thing with this flooding and all of this bad weather and earthquakes and everything else. If that don't tell you something, then you're dumber than I think you are. Hallelujah. <laughs> Jesus is soon to come. Folks. And all that matters to you as an individual is if you're ready for Him to come. Right. And if you're not, you need to get ready tonight. Amen. Amen. But blind Bartimaeus was sitting there on the highway side and I'm persuaded to believe that he asked the people every time he'd hear somebody pass by, his faith would begin to mount within him. He could not see. All he heard, all he could do was hear the crowd coming. And he would ask, hey, is this him? Is this him? Is this my opportunity, hallelujah. Oh God, how we ought to be excited about the house of God. How we ought to come with faith in our heart. And every word that is spoken, every song that is sung, ought to be to us. It ought to be to meet our need and to bless us. But finally it come the time that they said, yes, I believe it's him. It's a little distance off, but it looks like it might be him. There's a great multitude thrown around him. And finally it came to the place that there it was. And Bartimaeus, the Bible said, began to cry out, Oh, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And like in our life today, there's always a bunch of dead heads and dry hides that want to put a quietness to everything. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. And they told him, be still. He's too busy to mess with you. Yeah. But you see, your need is the most important yeah. to him. Whoever you are. Whatever you are. Your need is important to him. It's important that you're in the house of God tonight. Whether you have been baptized in Jesus' name or not, it's important to him. Whether you have the Holy Ghost or not, it's important to him. Hallelujah. I said last night, if we were as concerned about our salvation as God is of us being saved, we would see a great move of God like we've not seen in a long time. But Barnabas began to cry out, Thou son of David, have mercy on me. And the dead heads and dry eyes couldn't stop him. He just began to cry that much more. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. My God, you ought to worship. You ought to cry out to him tonight. Not because I'm here, but because he's here. Hallelujah. And I said, you are needy people tonight. Oh, God, help us to understand. But as Bartimaeus began to cry out, Oh, Jesus. Jesus began to come to him. When he heard that it was Jesus, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Many charged him, you should hold your peace. But I'm telling you, when you come to the house of God, we acted like Baptists or something tonight. Amen. Thank God we shouldn't let these little children outdo us. They do more worshiping than we were. Amen. We've come to the house of God to worship Him, to praise Him, to magnify Him. I've been out there in hell all day long. I fought the devil all day long. I've had a bad day today. This is one of the first times since my wife's been gone. I kind of dozed off in the chair and I heard her calling my name, Brother Pat, and woke me up. Oh, it's been a bad day, but brother, I've come to the house of God to get my need met. But a man set this time on the road out of Jericho to get his need met. He had heard that he was a blind eye opener. Hallelujah. He was putting himself in the position. Oh, God is not going to draw you and beat you and knock you, but if you'll reach out to him tonight, he'll meet your need. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. He's a healer, but he ain't just going to knock you down to get to heal you. No, he won't. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. But he cried out so much the Lord. Yeah. You see, he was the blind man. He was the one that had the need. He was the one that couldn't see. Hallelujah. Uh, first thing we need to do is admit we've got whatever problem we've got. Amen. Thank God I'm telling you, he's a cigarette deliverer. Hallelujah. 
Amen. He's a Holy Ghost filler. Hallelujah. He's a Savior. Hallelujah. He'll heal your body. He'll cleanse your soul. He'll raise the dead. Hallelujah. Oh, but this cry, this has done something to me every time I look at it. The Bible said, because he cried so much the more, Jesus stood still. Yes. Brother, that's something when our cry has so much power to it, Brother Ronnie, that it stops yeah. the God of the universe. Huh? Come on. He was as much God on the road out of Jericho as he is sitting on the throne tonight. Hallelujah. He was as much who he was right then as he is right now. Amen. Oh, God. Amen. But oh, that cry. I hear people, we have our little forms and our little ideas and theories that we go through, you know. We're going to pray for somebody or pray for some our dear, precious, kind, loving, heavenly Father. That don't turn God on. Hallelujah. Our little ignorance doesn't turn Him on at all. But I'll tell you what does. Just a simple name of Jesus. Jesus. It sets every angel in heaven at attention. Hallelujah. Waiting to be disposed Hallelujah. for your yes. blessing and Amen. your help. Amen. Amen. Yes. Oh, yes. Amen. be careful to entertain or strangers for in doing so some have entertained angels, angels unaware. unaware. Amen. I remember a time we were in Houston. Went there. We had one tithe payer, $25 a week. We took on a church note, a light bill, a gas bill, a home bill, and everything else. And we were getting $25 a week. And I, the groceries were slim. And, and we were just about, the kids tell it, they'd say, we had macaroni and no cheese. Amen? That's right. But there was a man that came to the door. And he said, ma'am, I was gone at the time. And told Sister White, said, ma'am, I'm hungry. I haven't eaten for, I think it was two or three days. And she said, sir, I'm sorry. I don't have hardly anything to give you. And uh, she started to walk away from the door and just the Lord spoke to her. She turned back around. She said, I'll share with you what we got. Uh, he, she gave him a little can of Vienna sausage and I don't know what all, peanut butter and jelly and something else, something cold to drink. And she, he asked her, said, can I go out here and sit under the tree and eat this? She said, yes, sir. She turned around and turned back around to see where he was or to give him something else, and he was gone. Just that quick vanish. I don't know what you believe and don't care. Hallelujah. I've had too many angels visit me. Hallelujah. I told you the last time I was here, it's at the white when she had that, that familiar little uh, squawk that she did. And uh, she had been praying the kids. David and Melissa was 13 months apart, and and uh, they had run out of diapers, and uh, and uh, we just didn't have any money. We was going to revival and didn't have any money. Just barely had enough to get to get to the revival. They didn't pay five hundred dollars a week back then, brother Pat. Uh, you was lucky we got uh, two cans of peaches and uh, fourteen dollars for one revival. Amen. Yep. And one revival, the pastor wrote me a check, and the people laughed when I went to the bank to cash it. Hallelujah. But uh, all those things are the blessings of the Lord, you see. You find out that He's something more than just something to talk about or sing about. Uh, he becomes your best friend. Hallelujah. He becomes not only your God, but your friend, your, your confidant, and everything else. Hallelujah. He comes one that you can talk to in the middle of the night. But she went to say something to the man and he was gone. And, and uh, she said, uh, well, she didn't know what to think about it at first. And I believe it was an angel. Well, shortly thereafter, we the I think the Lord spoke to her and said, your cupboard will never be empty again. And we didn't know how that was going to happen. We were looking for a great revival and a hundred souls to come in and money just flow everywhere. Well, it didn't happen like that, Brother Davis. But I'm telling you, God took care of it and our, our cupboards never was dry again. We got in connection with the lady that was from the... Uh, the food bank there in the city of Houston, we had to buy a freezer to hold the food. I'm telling you, God will take care of you. He'll meet your need, honey. Hallelujah. If you live for Him and be faithful, 
Somebody said he didn't do it for me. Well, shame on you. Hallelujah. It ain't shame on him. Hallelujah. Somewhere we missed it. Somewhere we failed. But Absolutely. Bartimaeus was going to worship. It didn't matter what anybody thought. That's the way we ought to come to the house of God. We know this is a house of worship. That's what he said he'd be called, the house of worship. My God, we need to worship and praise Him tonight. Uh, and anyway, when I was telling you about the diapers. And we drove by an old dump like, and there was a package laying beside the road. And my wife said, "Oh, stop!" She said, "There's a package of diapers." I said, "Yeah, I'll never one of them full. You gonna get one that got off the mess we ever been in in our life." And I want you to know it was sealed up. Half of them fit my baby boy and half of them fit my baby girl. And campers don't pack them like that. There was an angel to be sure as I stand in this pulpit tonight that made those diapers for my babies. Hallelujah. Somebody said, I don't believe that. Don't matter me. Don't, don't dampen my spirits at all. I know what God will do. I said, now, if we had pulled up to like a four-way stop, and we stopped and Sister White let out that war hoop again, and I looked and there was a little whirlwind coming right up to our car. It's like everything else went in animation. Nobody was moving. No cars was going. It rolled right up to our door. She stepped out of the door, picked money out of the thing, put it in her pocket. When she got the last dollar, it died, and we went on. Hallelujah. And I'm telling you what God will do. You can stop the very God of the universe with your cry tonight, whoever you are. You don't have to be a preacher. You don't have to be the main one. But I'm telling you, God will do it for you just as sure as anything. Yes, He will. Yes, he will. Oh, uh -huh. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. We quote those things, but then we don't believe them. Uh -huh. Oh, God. You know, it's like Sister Carol. See, they told her, and, and no doubt in my mind, I, I just got it in my mind that that doctor thinks she's probably got cancer. But he's a cancer doctor. Amen. Hallelujah. That's what they Amen. Mean. I said he's a cancer sure doctor. Yeah. And it's probably already taken care of. Hallelujah. That's the way he does. Yes, he is. Amen. Hallelujah. And if it ain't, I finally come to grips with this. We had prayed for Sister White Cheeling. There, we had seen God bring her back from so low. She had one time she had died three times, twice on the way to the hospital, and then when they got her to the hospital, they lost her again. And, and the doctor come out to me and told me when they finally revived her the third time, said, "Mr. White, I'm sorry, but I, I just I just know there's going to be brain damage, and, and uh, she she probably have to be." put in a home somewhere and blah 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 you know the, all they got is negative mess yeah. they don't know nothing except what some man taught them hallelujah thank God but anyway when she woke up three days later she looked around and there was an orderly in her room and he said do you know your name she thought, said I thought how ignorant are you I've had the same name for about 60 years <laughs> Then he asked, she told him, he asked her, said, do you know where you are? She said, well, anybody knows this is a hospital. And there wasn't no brain damage, honey, because I'm telling you, God is a brain doctor. Hallelujah. He'll take you through. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And if he has to, he'll get in the fiery furnace with you. Hallelujah. He didn't quench a fire. He didn't dump a bucket of water on it. But he took the burn out of it. Hallelujah. Their clothes didn't even smell of smoke. <laughs> Thank God, I'm telling you, about a God that'll do it for you. Hallelujah. Amen. My God, I'm feeling good in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And they called the blind man, saying unto him, Be of good comfort, rise, he calleth thee. And he casting away his garment, rose and came to Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. He no longer wanted to be recognized as the blind. For you see, in that day, the blind wore a certain kind of robe. Yes. It was a sign you knew they, they were, were blind. blind. Yep. Amen. The Bible said he took off his robe. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Folks, when you come to the altar and repent, you ought to take off your robe. That's right. Amen. 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 That robe of sin, that robe of unrighteousness. Yeah. 
put on a robe of righteousness. Ha! Ha! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Wilt thou be made whole? Now doesn't that sound like a silly thing? But some folks, you know, they'd lose their social security if they got healed. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. That's right. They'd rather be sick than healed. <laughs> Amen. I'd rather let God take care of the healing and the social security. Hallelujah. You're fixing to lose it anyway. <laughs> Amen. And all this Medicaid, Medicare, Medi everything else, they're getting ready to take that away from you. But you know what's going to happen? The church is going to pray, Sister Daisy, like they ain't ever pray. They're going to get on their knees. They're going to know what it is to pray. They're not going to know what it is. Hallelujah. They ain't going to be able to sit down and write a check for it. They're going to have to pray for it. Hallelujah. Thank God I have come through the time that I have come through. Uh, we, we've never been high-class evangelists or, or high-class pastor when we were pastoring. We merely tried to help people and pray folks through the Holy Ghost when we were evangelizing and same with pastoring. But I'm going to tell you something. God will be there for you. He'll be food on your table. He'll be gas in your car. Amen. I could tell you miracle after miracle. Oh my. Amen. And I'm going to tell you something. If God has no other way to move, He'll move on somebody yes, and will. tell Him to bring it to yes, you. He will. Yes, he will. Some of you here have brought me uh, financial blessings. Amen. God, that's just the kind of God we serve. Hallelujah. Jesus asked Him, "Wilt thou? what wilt thou that I should do unto thee the blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Go thy way. Thy faith. Thy faith. Thy faith. We're living in a faithless generation. Amen. Amen. God, yeah. We say we know we can do it. I told somebody the other day, I said, Well, if I'm going to start back to evangelizing because of sicknesses and things that happen, uh, I this is about the third or fourth time I've been in the pulpit in the last two years. I have been so sick and went through so many things. But you see, the Lord brought me out. And Hallelujah. I told somebody, I said, I'm going to need a car. And David said, Dad, where are you going to get the money? I said, where well, I got the money the last eight yeah. that I had. God gave them to the me. Hallelujah. <laughs> God just gave them to me. Amen. Sent me one to catch on far and wreck here, and I got another and went on. Hallelujah. I think run He's got like the cars everywhere, sure yeah. Yes, he does. Hallelujah. God is a good God, folks. But he wants you to present your need to him. Amen. Yes, sir. He wants you. Musicians come if you will. They will survive. There are all kind of needs in this building tonight. Hallelujah. There are some never been baptized in Jesus' name. You need to do it. That's what the Bible said. Amen. There's some that maybe you haven't received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. It'll take it to get to heaven. Hallelujah. If that same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, if it dwell in your mortal body, it shall also quicken you. Amen. And bring you forth that day. Ah, glory to God. The brother that is pastor of the Nazarene Church looked out at the congregation tonight and said, told Carol, said, tell him I'm, I'm of the good bunch. Amen. I said, he has to be a be Nazarene in a Pentecostal church. Amen. Amen. I've been on both sides and in the middle of it, honey. I know. Thank God. Amen. That's it. God is so good. God is so good. I couldn't complain if I wanted to. I, I, I just seen Him do it. That's all there is to it. It doesn't matter what your need is tonight. Jesus said, except a man be born of the water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom. And then He said, Except he be born of water and the Spirit, he can't see the kingdom. Hallelujah. I want to see the kingdom. I want to enter. Coming to church is wonderful. But unless a 
as we surrender to the Lord. If Bartimaeus would have went on out of town that day, he'd have died a blind man, but instead his need was met. There's some, no doubt, this is not the first time you've ever been here, but for some reason or another, you have failed to surrender your life to the Lord. That's what it's all about tonight. That's what the music's about. That's what the singing's about. That's what the preaching's about. They don't just play to entertain. We don't do what we do just to entertain. But there's a day that every man, every woman, every boy, and every girl is going to stand before God and give an account. If you have not been born again of water and of the Spirit. Amen. And then there's those that have even been born of the water and the Spirit. But somewhere we've not totally dedicated ourselves. Giving it all to God. Jesus said, except the man deny himself. Take up his cross and follow me. He cannot be my disciple. I want to be a disciple, don't you? I want to be what God wants me to be. I said it in the beginning. I want to go to heaven. And I'd like to see every one of you go with me. Amen. But it's going to take what this book says for us to do. We love you tonight. Appreciate the opportunity of being here preaching to you tonight. And I hope somebody has received something. God is so good.